today is the first day of one of the biggest sim racing events in the planet. This is basically the dream of any sim racer or racer who wants to use simulators to practice. You will get the best of the best in terms of technology for sim racing here. So it's pretty much the Comic Con for sim racing. I want to try everything that's around, so let's go explore. I traveled all the way from Canada to Germany to attend this annual event to launch my first ever racing technique for the Motor Racing Book and to meet many of the biggest sim racing content creators and manufacturers in the world. But most importantly, I also got to meet many of you students and subscribers who are improving massively and sharing this passion for sim racing. The purpose of this event is to always push the barrier of sim racing, of the technology that allows us gamers to experience the closest possible to what is real life racing and allow real racers to use the simulation to prepare to real life events in a better and better and better environment. Like just stuff like that, we're always pushing the barriers, we're always inventing better ways to simulate and to emulate the sensations and the techniques that we're going to work on when we're driving fast in real life. I spent three days testing the simulators and chatting with amazing people from the community and what you're about to watch are the best bits of it so make sure you watch this video until the end we're going to show you my experience as i ranked the simulators from worst to best let's go so we're here with the legend oh, cameron legend. das he is going to test out the forza motorsport and i want to see what is his impression and whether it is a good option if you want to try a game that is realistic that could help you light up prepare to real life or something i mean forza for me was the sim that got me into sim racing in the beginning so i'm really curious to see the progression and see where the sim's at now. So this is really as close as a camera. Really? <laughs> oh god. I don't like that camera angle. It's kind of delayed, no? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the ABS is very good. I think probably too good. Oh. But but not my right foot. I probably should have left TC on. Did you buy your license? Oh my god, this is like a lot for me to wrap my head around right now. Let's start with our weirdest experience. Forza Motorsport had a booth there, but it seems like they didn't set it up properly. So the game had a ridiculous amount of input lag, and I'm pretty sure no one liked that experience. Oh, oh the snaps are like really delayed. Yeah, I the feel snaps like, are crazy. But you, they definitely happen before you feel it. It might just be bad. Don't you think the force feedback is a little bit delayed? That's what I'm that's what I'm saying, exactly. I think it's just a huge input lag from the TV or something. That, it might honestly be that. When Cameron was testing, I was just laughing at how bad it looked, but I totally understood how he felt when it was my turn to try it out. I can tell already you trust the ABS way more, so you just oh. <laughs> It's so slow. The response is so slow. Yeah. Oh my god. Watch the wheel. Whoa. <laughs> Dude. Now, I think this is all always delayed, like anyways. But I think we have, yeah. That that's. I don't think that's normal. You need to teleport your mind into the future when you're driving this. Oh yeah. Now I can see the corrections. Dude, this is like a three tenths delay. I feel bad for the poor person that's gonna drive this sim after us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this input lag is deadly. I get the feeling that this is a lot like Gran Turismo 7 in that there's a very specific driving style. It might not necessarily be realistic, but once you get to it, then all of a sudden lines and habits start feeling a lot more like real life. <laughs> you give up. This is so bad. I, 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 honestly, congrats for completing the like, three laps. <laughs> Without spinning. Well, yes. this is my new claim to fame. I beat Swellio Almeida in a sim racing competition. No, in a game. Okay, okay, in a game. We're gonna have to do something on a sim then. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm about to test Ren Sport. All right, first time on Ren Sport, huh? Yeah. The game so uh, exclusive and nobody knows <laughs> what it's like. Uh, it's clipping. The force feedback is clipping. Oh, like, oh nothing, yeah, yeah. No detail here. Head. See, oh, when, yeah. I, when, I, when I'm trail breaking, it's clipping. Is it possible to change the force feedback? Yeah, like as soon as I turn a little bit with the braking, it reaches 100% and then I get no detail after. No detail, no detail, I feel nothing. Probably like turn it down in the game and then up in the base. Let me see how it feels now. It's a bit odd that we're on day three and then this is uh, the setup on the rig. Can't really evaluate it, no? Like you can evaluate the entries from mid to exit, but not yeah. the most important part of the corner, right? For feeling. Yeah, look, yeah, before yeah. you even turn in, you're clipping force feedback. Yeah, yeah it's clipping which way. I like the physics initially. I can't feel it as much with the force feedback clipping, but so far it's good. The neutral steer is intense in this game. You can feel the car going, but it's not actually going. Like it's just in the center. It tells you, you see, like yeah. you just light the car a lot more. Visually, this is looking a lot more like real life than Assetto. Yeah, look at that, look at that. It's super neutral. Oh, I love this feeling. Really? Yeah. 
Like, it it's looking like real car behavior right now. It's behaving way more like a real car in terms of transitioning between understeer and oversteer, and then and then back to oversteer at the exits. Yeah, it almost feel, almost feels too forgiving though. Whereas like i racing is too unforgiving. Yeah, you know what true. I mean. It feels good because it's easy. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Like, look how many mistakes I made in that one corner, and I didn't die, you know? Very responsive to trail braking as well. It just, the front just instantly tucks in the second you touch the brake pedal. You can really rotate on power or on brakes and kind of have the flexibility to do really whatever you want. And you can kind of react to it, which is, again, like it feels good, but it feels too easy. It doesn't penalize you for making a mistake. It's kind of hard to crash in this game so far. I say that and I almost die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, that, was, that didn't look like you were gonna lose it. So what did I think about Rain Sport? It looks like you can throw the car around a lot more and the physics look pretty intuitive, although the force feedback being not set up properly really killed the fun of it. So maybe next time. Oh, and by the way, I was faster than camera on this one. So we're about to try one of the Ace Attack. I think it's a 27 Newton meter wheel. We're driving a formula car, but that's all I know. But uh, I think Swalia might have a little bit of an advantage for this one. Next up, we have Ace Attack in a much higher level simulator. And although Cameron said I was going to have an advantage in this one, I actually did not know the track Mugello and he had raced there in real life. So the advantage was actually his. Yes, that is my excuse. Hey man, how are you? You good? What's up, mate? Good to see you. Right. We're just filming a video real quick. Oh, should I get the out of here? Slightly, yes. This track in real life is so physical, bringing back bad memories. No! Oh. And I was trying to learn the track, but when I was finally getting the flow, the time was up. Oh! <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, the, the, the sim is great. The, the you're, you're driving done. was Oh! <laughs> Bit too much. I pulled the swell out. How does it feel? It's uh, it's very sharp. <laughs> I, the wheel feels really good. I, I would probably want a bit more force feedback to be honest, but um, it's probably realistic to this car. The brake pedal is really nice, very stiff. Come on, you can do a 123. Let's go. Cameron was flying on this one, and he was about to beat the record of the entire day, but then. He up. No! Oh! No! <laughs> Rip. No! What was the record? It was 23-4, right? You almost beat the, the best ah, one. Almost. Damn. So close, so close. Although he did not beat the lap time record of the day, he did beat me because I didn't even finish a lap. Next up, we have Venim. I'm Hugo from Venim and we build pedals. We have a bit of history with Formula 4s and single-seaters. And so we thought that maybe the single-seater pedals were not developed enough. So we thought, why not put the same guys that developed the Formula 4 to develop our pedal sets? This one though, like I think he's going to destroy me because it's Formula. He is a Euro Formula champion in real life. If I get close enough, I'm going to be happy. Let's go. I have an excuse though. My hand it feels a little bit weird, it's so light down. Proper formula car. I know. I can already tell you're gonna be quicker than me. Why? Because you're clean from the beginning, whereas I just fuck up every <laughs> corner for like seven minutes. Venom allowed us to test two settings with their pedals. The soft setting is meant for non-racing drivers and it's much more comfortable and the hard setting simulates the real car and is much stiffer with less travel and requires a lot more strength. Of course, because me and Cameron already raced real Formula cars, we for sure prefer the hard one. No! I downshifted! I was like, oh, that... The gamer downshifted. Yeah, no lap time, so it's a tie. Because we never, we, we don't know what last time I would do, uh, right? <laughs> the math ain't math in there. So right now, same car, same track, but we have a much stiffer um, bump stop in the brake pedal. So what's the difference on the pedal so far? Well, already you can tell the brake pedal is way stiffer and probably right around, I'd say, F3 level. F4 pedal for me was always stiffer. But obviously it's a Braking wise, yeah, yeah. It obviously depends on what master cylinders you're running in real life. This is definitely in the window of being realistic. So I think you'll 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 immediately recognize the pedal feel when you when you get in it from the Formula Four car. Ah! Wait, wait, more left, more left, more left, more left, more left. No flat. That's the line. Ah. Okay. That's a lot better. <laughs> Fucking Gucci <goatee> now. <laughs> you can't help it. 7-1. Well, give it your best shot. I don't think I'm gonna beat this. He can do it. So how does the brake pedal feel? Very different. Very, huh? very different. Ten times different. Yeah. 
I, I, was, I completely forgot it was gonna be stiff. <laughs> when I started breaking, I was like, what? They replaced it with a wall? This feels more like the F4 car, no? Actually, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a brake that measures pressure now. Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, rear. Fuck me up, that fucked me up. Yeah. I had no grip. Yeah, no as grip. soon as you slide, it's gone. No! Still faster than you. Really? Yeah. Ah, nice. You did a point one, I did a ah. point zero. <laughs> With off track. Oh, you. Okay, okay, you have to do it again. <laughs> okay. I was faster. Maybe it didn't count, but I was faster. By one tenth. Uh -uh. <laughs> Okay, so here we have Coffee Racer, which is such a cool idea of creating like a very compact sim racing cockpit that fits literally in a box. Tell me about it. I was young like you once, and then I had a nice uh, uh, MDF a wheel stand in the corner of the room with the cables hanging out, not painted, and then I got a girlfriend and it had to go, so I couldn't race anymore. A couple of years later, I thought, oh, I miss racing, so I made something and it was actually that one. It was a plant stand, I put it in the corner of the room, plant on it, and once every week I wanted to race and I put it in front of the couch, and that evolved in time till I got something that was better, and then Corona came, and people People told me, well, I'm really bored at home, and I thought I'm going to help those people. This is so cool. In two laps, I forgot I was in such a different solution. In a coffee table. Two laps, I was like, oh, I'm driving. So that's when a rig is good, we don't think about it. You get into the zone, so this achieved it. Next up, we're going to test a simulator that costs 50,000 euros. It's supposed to give you the best experience possible. Let's see if it's actually true. It's kind of, look how tall this guy is. Put it on the seat belts. That will probably simulate two forces. Brake pedals are okay? Yes. From the distance? Okay. Yeah. 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 Perfect. You can see this shift up and down, and it goes pretty deep. Like it goes down there to there. Okay, so this one was crazy because as soon as I started breaking, the seat belts crushed me, and I started coughing. <laughs> There's so much force here. Whoa. When you brake hard, you can feel it very hard. Like when you start free braking, you can feel the effects of free braking through the seat belt. That's a proper immersion right there. The push effect is amazing. The level of calibration and everything is good. This is a property set up. Would you buy this? Honestly, yes. I would have this one. <laughs> I always say that most of the games are like unnecessary and overkill. This one is like, just incredible. This is like the yeah. highest immersion I've ever had in a motion break. <laughs> We were having fun and everything, but I had to run to the stage because it was finally time for the most important part of the event, which was the launch of my new book. So I can introduce you when you come up, or you can just be here. Uh, oh, well, be careful, be careful. I'll put it perfectly. You stand that side. Now, between you and me, you have no idea how nervous I was. I was afraid I was gonna say something dumb or trip and fall or do some weird face and zone out. I don't know. It's pretty scary to be on stage with big cameras on you like that. It's very different to when you're at home recording and you can redo the takes over and over again. But I survived. Thank you very much for your time. Give me a round of applause. Let's play our made it. The interview was amazing and I will post the highlights in my next video, so subscribe if you want to check it out when it's out. Something's worth listening to. Yeah. Thank you, man. You, you make me feel comfortable up there. Nah, so. No worries, man. All good. As long as you're happy. I'm totally...
After the interview, we had the book signing event where I got to meet and chat with so many of you guys and also so many legends of sim racing. And this is how it went. How did you get into sim racing? I was a motorcycle driver and it was a new approach for racing right now. Sim racing brought me there to life again and it's amazing. I was a console guy for years and then I found Arfata. I bought myself Logitech G25 and that's it. I was hooked from the moment I stepped into that world ever since just been going out. It's a way of life now. I got into sim racing during the pandemic like a lot of people. Yeah. And I love motor racing. I used to like watching the Formula One. And I saw them doing these virtual races on TV and I thought, I'd like to try that. I bought a Logitech steering wheel. Your notable skill is the relax hand. I haven't heard it anywhere is it from yours. That's like completely new for me. It was mind blowing. I used to play Grand Prix Legends back in the day with pre-internet and then I had kids and work and I didn't do any gaming, didn't do any, I didn't even know sim racing was a thing. And then in 2017 I built a computer and found Steam which was a new thing to me. And then the first thing that I found was iRacing. I first race with a controller, next day I went out and bought a wheel, a few days later I went out and bought two, bought two more screens and realised, you know, manifested into what, what we have today. I've been following your channel since I started in iRacing. It's been a while and uh, you're, you've always been such an inspiration to me. Well, it was mainly like through my father because uh, he always used, used to watch like all kinds of motorsport. F1 has always been like a, like a big part of me. Maybe, maybe a bit too much time spent, but uh, yeah, for me it's worth it. I was driving Gran Turismo for such a long time and I also got into real life racing and I always want to improve then I found you. Got a lot of tips from you, improved myself very very much so very it's an honor. grateful. Thank you so much. Yeah that got me into sim racing. I started with the Microsoft wheel without force feedback at all. Grew up with racing and stuff. Didn't know that you were gonna be here. Mario Kart, no. <laughs> a few years back I bought the PlayStation and at Gran Turismo and therefore I switched to, to iRacing because uh, you have this more realistic, it's just amazing, I, I love it. What does it mean to you to be in a deck? It's a dream for any sim racer, you know it. Uh, being here, testing all the new materials. This is my first sim expo. I wish I knew how awesome this place is, so I could have been here before. And I'm not going to miss the next one. The atmosphere, everyone is friendly. And it's been nice to meet so many wonderful people. Meeting so many people that have the same interests is really, really fun and interesting. I'm really grateful for this experience and hopefully I'll come to the next ADAC event next year. A wonderful opportunity to meet people that, you know, you've followed online, I've watched you online and you said that I was an inspiration to you, but you are now an inspiration to me. What you do, what you're doing inspires me and I'm sure it'll inspire, you know, thousands of other people to do or to try and improve what they're trying to do on track. I, did, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, important to uh, check out maybe like new sim gear that I could get, like maybe new technology. I really want to try VR since I haven't ever done that. Meet people like you, like like Cam, it's really, really amazing. I, I already met so many people, You're also from the German sim scene. Feels like a really big coming together. I think it's a great opportunity to see all the different rigs and sim racing partners and try out uh, different things and meet great people. For me, this event has been always about meeting the people, feeling the excitement to share the passion with actual people who you talk, you have contact with them almost daily, but see them in person is such a beautiful experience. We never meet each other, right? Yeah. So it's like an annual in-person meeting of a community. It's very important for us to, to realize that we're not alone in our exactly. in our places. We are actually exactly. sharing it with millions of people because it does feel a little bit lonely when you're only driving in your studio for that, the entire that, year. I try to mention this many times in my videos because in our everyday life we have normal jobs. The people around doesn't really understand what we are doing and, and we feel kind of alone. And then when you are a place like this, meeting people with the absolute same passion, you, it just hits home. You know, you feel like, okay. No. You think you're obsessed, and then you meet someone yeah. that is crazy yeah. about it. <laughs> I do sim racing for more than 17 years. I have friends almost in any part of the world. Team racing helped me a lot on a real track, especially I racing. Here is Red Weasel. O homem, a lenda, Suelio Almeida, nosso irmão brasileiro, esteve aqui um fantastic project. Tenho a honra de ter recebido pelas mãos dele, autografado e com uma dedicatória. Suélio, muito obrigado. Obrigado pela tua paixão pelo Sim Racing e partilhar o teu conhecimento, que é vastíssimo, é absolutamente incrível. Obrigado. We don't have a lot of time because of our important lunch break. On yes. the last day, it's about to leave, but I wanted to register this emotional encounter with this lovely person. Man. 
random call sign. Man, it was so good to meet you. This is like a dream, dude. A... Um prazer. Thank you, man. Well, Espero yeah. ver... ver bom tempo. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this emotional moment. It's emotional. It's emotional moment yeah. with my go-kart hands. Uh, yeah, it's go-karting. I call it furiously masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very angry one. <laughs>